following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with Michigan State University. Welcome to MSU Today. I'm Jim Peck. Here's what's coming. Building mobility. Um, we're building a sociable, recumbent tandem bicycle. Children's choir. Cole's house. Peanuts, cashews, and pecans. Hmm. Pies. Welcome to MSU Today. I'm Jim Peck, and this is Cole's House. It's one of the jewels here on campus, and we'll be showing you more a little bit later. You know, a lot of what students learn here at MSU is practical. And for some engineering students, their final project before graduation gives them a chance to use everything they've learned in going after their degree. And for some, this ending actually means a new beginning of mobility for someone else. interesting to see how everything has to work together. See, there's about 15 groups and um, everyone does something different. Oh yeah, we were gunning for this. This is our capstone project, our final design project. There were a ton of different um, prototypes that we could choose and we just wanted the humanitarian one. I'm pretty excited for it just because uh, a lot of the other projects that were offered, um, there's not a whole lot of building. Um, we're building a sociable recumbent tandem bicycle which basically means two people sitting side by side, and ours is a tricycle style, so three wheels, um, one in the front, two in the back. For John Montalvo, it was the humanitarian project. He's handicapped, has limited mobility in his legs and arms. Um, he enjoys riding bicycles and getting exercise, but it's really hard for him to. So we're designing a bike especially for him. Uh, it's very rewarding for the fact that um, it could really change somebody's life. Um, our group was contacted to build um, a mobility device. They yeah, were still good. And it's just nice that ours is really going to help someone. It's a humanitarian project through the college. Uh, they sponsor us. Well, that looks good there. His family contacted uh, the school to have a mobility device built for him so that he could get out and um, kind of get some exercise for his leg. There's two sets of pedals. And since John is not that strong, he has his own set of gears. Oh yeah, this is better. <laughs> we also are equipping it with bucket seats so that he's um, supported on all sides. There's gonna be over um, shoulder seat belts uh, around the waist and also straps for his feet. So we decided to build the um, tandem tricycle um, for him so that he could have a family, family member um, next to him. Well, it could have gone with four wheels, but it uh, would have been tougher to design the steering and all that. We wanted to go for lightweight. They mentioned that was a concern of theirs. Does that one look good? Uh, and it's really a balance issue. Um, for him, it'd be really hard if it was just two wheels, uh, like a normal tandem. So it's like butter. Uh, I think it better not break, or else I don't want to go back into the shop and remake everything is what I think. <laughs> yes, we, we want to play with it a little, little before we uh, hand it over to the Montalvo. At that moment when we can actually ride the bike, I mean, it's, it's basically a finished bike then. It's just going to be a proud moment where you can sit back and say, hey, we actually built that ourselves and it's just going to be probably one of the biggest accomplishments of my life uh, to this point. So this is the big test. This is a big test. Hopefully we don't disappoint. Today we're just testing it out. Uh, we've been building for about two months and today's the big day to test everything out before we give it to uh, John Montalvo who we're uh, making it for. We've heard other stories of uh, people testing them and you know wheels going out with the you know just hard bangs and fixing the problem. Both of us crashed and burned. We're thinking to solve the problem of the chains falling off to attach some little like C brackets that just stick up. We made it almost. The only problem was that these were shifting upwards and loosening the chain, and then that was causing some problems. But we fixed that, and now there's another problem. Not only do we have to build a prototype, but we've got to build a working prototype that's going to last and uh, a person can use on a daily basis. Really, you just say how to test it out and redesign things and uh, make it make it perfect. Yeah, that might work. It's pretty rewarding. Uh, it's Definitely nice to get outside for once and not be in the basement of an uh, engineering school, uh, you know, for eight hours a day. So it's definitely nice to get out here. It looked cool. It looked cool. It was starting to come and take shape, and, you know, it's not just a set of bars anymore. Now we're finally getting our 
fandom together. I think they'll love it. We'll love it. It'll be a great day. <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. There you go. A lot of self-satisfaction, not only to say we built that, um, but it's also going to be very satisfying knowing that uh, John, who is getting the bike, is going to be able to get outside and ride the bike, and I think it's going to be quite touching. I hope he likes it. <laughs> I mean, working with the family itself just makes it a lot more personable. Well, he's just lit up about the whole project. You ready, Johnny? All right. I'll probably be really nervous, but once he gets in it and he smiles and likes it, then I'll be able to breathe easy and like, okay, I did okay. Look up, so he's looking up to the sky. <laughs> You're giving someone else the ability to do something they haven't been able to do. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a good capstone to my MSU career here. Okay, look up when, you're, when we're riding, okay? No mires para abajo, okay? It hasn't been so emotional yet, but I think when we really hand it off and see the excitement on his face. No, and if he, there you go, Johnny, you got it. There you go. He can go backwards. He can't go forward, though. <laughs> we saw excitement on his face even when we've talked about it. And when we hand it off, I think it's just going to be a, a completely different level of excitement. I, and I think it might blow us away. And it's, it's just going to be really touching to see um, what you do and how it can change somebody's life and just completely make them so happy. Yeah, te gusta? Huh? Oh yeah, it's mine. <laughs> like, it's our design, it's our craftsmanship. Yeah, this is kind of the, bit, the class you work for uh, throughout your four years in, in the engineering school. The project was wonderful, the bike turned out great. Learning how to build something from scratch, it's a nice life skill to have. It's just nice if I see it on the road, him enjoying it, be like, oh, I built that. That's mine. Well, you see an expression on his face. I think that in itself is, you know, makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> right, John? Te gusta? Te gusta? Dile a él, te gusta en la bicicleta? Yeah? I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs>
I just thought that working with children's voices would not offer the richness that it has. Just her energy, her smiles, the way she taught us. Ms. Stalick is so good that I don't know if I could expect to have another teacher as good. This has been just a very a big surprise to me. There are about three or four children's choral directors in the United States who are absolutely the best in their field, and Mary Alice is among those. She wouldn't have taken this project on if she didn't think the kids could do it. It would be hard to do it with choir not of that level. That is why it, it was very important for me to know what kind of choir is going to do. And when I heard that Mary Alice and choir are Grammy awarded, two, two Grammys I think they got. I do have two Grammys. It's very exciting. For a little Polish girl from Milwaukee, that's very exciting. Part of the loving nature of Mary Alice is wanting the best out of the kids and demanding that. Good is the enemy of excellence. She strives to make us the best we can be. Never want it just to be good, so let's do it again. Our choir teachers don't expect so much from us like Mrs. Stalick does. That is hilarious. And she gives us so much. OK, let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> With the choirs at our school, it's usually just this, do this, do that, but they don't show us how to do it. However, Mrs. Stalick does because of the way her face looks, she gives us lots of expression, and the way her hands are moving, we just know what she wants us to do. She inspires young people. So let's hear it again, and I just want to see that on your faces. So just sing through your eyes. She taught me to not only learn the words or the notes of music, she always says, feel the music from your heart. Don't just sing notes, like really sing through the notes and feel it. Some of the kids in that children's choir started when they were infants or toddlers. It is like family. I've been in the um, choir program for seven or eight years. It is something in which hopefully they will keep for the rest of their lives. It's just so much fun. I love the choir and I love singing. I've had wonderful experiences in my life. Her decision was to leave at this time when things were really on the upswing. This experience with this work was at the top. This is really a terrific evening for Michigan State. And I've told Mary Alice that I believe in working retirement as a concept, so this is her for official farewell concert, but hopefully not her last engagement with Michigan State University. happy for her. I'm sad for us because we're losing a legend. There's no other teacher like her. We're losing a person who has created a dynamic program. I think we should stand up. She's been a great conductor. How she feels about the music reflects on us and what we feel about it. She's just like that fun-loving kind of person, but she's also the person who wants to get work done at the same time. I'm going to miss her a lot. Jim Forger is the dean of the College of Music, and in 1993 when when we sat down together and he said, how would you like to start a children's choir? I don't think either one of us knew uh, what a great journey this would be. I certainly didn't. Mary Alice is a person who creates magic with young people. She is a person who is committed to excellence, and she is the person who has created an ensemble recognized nationally and internationally for its superb blend, musicality, and innovative programming. This choir has many, many, many years of great success ahead of it. What's next is, it's a lot of gardening. <laughs>
Pie is down to earth, you know. Pie is everyday food. Ackett's pies are legendary around parts of Michigan, and the legend is spreading. If you haven't tried one or even heard of them, it might be because they're basically a local operation, and they're made just like Grandma used to make them. But this place does not exactly look like your grandma's kitchen. Uh, no, it may not, but the pie will taste better. It did start out in Wendy's kitchen. She'd make pies, and she and her husband Dave would take them out to farmer's markets. Word of mouth, no pun intended, is what got them going. They grew and grew and recently moved into this sparkling spot in southeast Michigan. It is state of the art, but it's the state of an old art, and it's still all done by hand the old-fashioned way. It's not like Grandma's Kitchen. It's not very romantic to where we came from, but, you know, the story is great. It's, it's the American dream. It's a great success story from baking 20, you know, 25, 35 pies a week to now up to 10,000 a week on an average week. These days, they're in stores all over, even Whole Foods in Chicago. There is an MSU connection here. Wendy and her husband Dave worked with the MSU Product Center that helps businesses get started, grow, expand. Product development group has been great. You know, Matt Burbeck from there. Uh, we're a small company, you know, and there's a lot of questions we don't even know to ask, so we got a lot of help from. The product center started out as a place farmers could come when looking to diversify their businesses. Big corporate farms were gobbling up the small growers. Some farmers needed new ways to make money to keep their operations. The MSU Product Center helps them carry an idea like making cheese or barbecue sauce or other things from idea to market. These days, they also spend a lot of their time helping entrepreneurs make their way through the sometimes baffling maze of starting a new food-related business. Food on a shelf is really easy to create, but there's actually a, a lot of food science and regulatory and label and supply chain and distribution and marketing that goes into these products. And I think clients are always very blown away by the amount of work they're going to have to go through to bring these products to retail stores. And the MSG Product Center can really work with them going through all these issues from that concept all the way through to distribution. The economy has been rough in Michigan. Some have left or given up. Some might not think this state is the best choice to locate, let alone grow. But Wendy says the choice to keep this business here was a piece of cake. Well, not cake. It's really easy in Michigan because Michigan's such a great state. Um, we grow so much here. There's a lot of diversity in, in the crops that we grow. Michigan is number two in um, just the amount of things that we grow here. California is number one in food production. We're number two. We're number one in uh, cherry production, of course. Uh, we grow more blueberries than anybody else in the country. Uh, we're number two in apple production. Most everything that we use here in our bakery comes from Michigan, including our sugar. We don't grow cane sugar here, but we grow sugar beets. Uh, our flowers from Michigan, all of our hormone and steroid free milk and butter come from Michigan. So it's, it's a really great state. And right now, with the economy the way it is, I feel it's a really great time to start uh, a small cottage industry right now. For Matt Burbeck, well, he loves what he does. And he says he loves it because of, not in spite of, Michigan. Oh, it's a fun job. It's the great fun. I mean, whatever, what job could you ever travel throughout Michigan and eat buckets of great food? I mean, no, it's a fantastic job. And the great thing about it is you're allowed to be as creative and as crazy as you like, you know. And it continually astounds me about how many products and, and things are available in Michigan. I mean, we really have the most diverse entrepreneurial population all the way from blueberry growers in the UP to, you know, people creating soy sauces, people creating, you know, gluten-free, I mean, everything. I mean, it's all out there. I mean, it's just a, it's a, cornucopia of products. There are a lot of people in Michigan who've made the leap from field to kitchen to market. The product center has a client list of more than 600. But no matter how wonderful your product, getting it out to people can be a struggle. For Dave Ackett's, the decision to work with MSU was as easy as, well, you know. It's kind of a no-brainer because MSU is helping you for free and they're experts in their field and uh, uh, you know, they're certainly all about Michigan. Did I mention the free part? It is. It's another way this land-grant university reaches out to people. 
and maybe helps them reach their dreams. We really do everything right through from concept all the way through to major strategic planning for some pretty large companies. So if you're that person that has that recipe in your back pocket and you really want to try and bring that to fruition, you know, or you're a larger company really looking for some sort of strategic planning and some financial analysis, the MSU Product Center is the place you come to. And for Pi, well, Ackett's is the place a lot of people come to, even the governor. She just emailed over and said, uh, this berry pie is better than dot, 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 everything. So it was kind of nice. The Ackett's Handmade Pie Company is, perhaps, the 21st century version of a mom and pop business, a leading edge stainless steel approach to a homespun favorite. We started with the, what the grandmother would have used and tried to improve on that. So, and I think we've succeeded. Well, that's it from Cole's House. I'm Jim Peck. We'll see you next time on MSU Today. For more, go to our website. Michigan State University, in association with the Big Ten Network.